Hi, I'm Pastor George. Welcome to Inside the Vision. You know, partnership is a powerful concept. It's a God idea, and it produces powerful results. Now, just think about it. God called the 12 disciples to partner with Jesus. Now, why did he do that? Because he couldn't do his assignment alone. These disciples witnessed victory after victory. They saw miracle after miracle while ministering right alongside him. After Jesus took his place in heaven, the disciples continued the same ministry by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Apostle Paul is another example. He was sent by Jesus to share the gospel with the world. And the result was the formation of the early church. Because of Paul's partners, he was able to accomplish the work that God had called him to do. And aren't we all thankful for that? In the same way, Kenneth Copa Ministries cannot do what we do alone. It's only because of our partners that we're able to reach the world with this uncompromising message of faith. Everything we do is with our partners in mind. How do we get the word to you? What available voice can we use? And how can we pray for you? Well, as you know, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland pray for you every single day. Kenneth even carries your name on a flash drive in his pocket. And he sees your face and prays for his partners every day in his home office. He diligently prays over his monthly partner letter. It's not something that a staff member writes, and it certainly does not go through some marketing firm. No, this monthly partner letter is his personal way to connect with his partners and deliver a word straight from God to you. And since this episode is all about partnership, what better place to start than showing you how the partner letter gets from his hands into yours? The Partner Letter is a handwritten, faith-filled, personal letter of encouragement from Brother Copeland's heart to yours, our precious covenant partners. After he has received the word from the Lord for the letter, he sends his written copy to our KCM Communications Department, where it's typed, edited, and formatted to look like the final letter you receive. Now, prayer is the foundation of all we do, so the team prays over the letter to decide which images or graphics will best represent the overall theme. Those images become the extra pieces that come along with your letter. Samples of the letter and extra pieces are sent to Brother Copeland for his approval or any modifications he might have. He also underlines parts of the letter that he really wants emphasized. When everything has been cleared with the KC initial, the letter and components are printed, inserted into their addressed envelopes, prayed over and ready to be delivered to our partners' homes. The letter is sent to approximately 190,000 partners around the world and in six languages. This special letter you receive every month is sent to bless, encourage, and lift you up in your walk of faith. Being in Earl and Miss Evelyn's home, he said, um, we're gonna get up early in the morning. I want you to help me write my partner letter. And so, went into his study, and he's sitting behind his desk, and his Bible was just laying there on the desk. He said, what is this? I said, it's the Word of God. He said, what? is this? Well, I know you know I'm head. I don't know. I said, it's the Bible. It's the Word of God. He said, letters! <laughs> I mean, he hit me with that. I mean, I used George because I know he knows what I was going to do. <laughs> if I'd have hit Joe with that Bible like that. <laughs> <laughs> letters! And they're just as anointed today as the day they were written. Are you willing to commit today to write your partners a letter every month? I said, yes, I am. He said, you understand one thing. And, and he said this to or you students, he, and he said it to me. Oh, meet the needs of the people. 
That's your job. Meet the needs of the people. Find out the will of God. Then confer no longer with flesh and blood. And then get your job done at all cost. Meet the needs of the people. And he said, you don't write a letter, get your needs met. You write a letter to help them get their needs met. Now, does this clear to you? <laughs> yes, sir. Do you commit? I said, yes, sir. I like to go walk about, to push inside, to unmark, to big man. Time is to about set, me set in thing, to talk to the book, Bible, and I feel like the big man is close to me. Six pela morning go, lo day of blow me, me kira blow morning lo go walk about us all time, me kira late blow me, pen no go through. Me text him all poor man blow me lo Kenneth Copeland Ministries because me covenant partner lo old na me sabe all sem, all sack prayer lo me every day. Me open him. Book, Bible, Lord, read him all get a talk to God, poor man, blow me, Lord, cannot cobble the ministry is giving me. Me are a one plateau. Kira up na send him colors blow you. He send him colors blow me, na time leg blow me, abrush him straight, mark, Lord, door blow me, me peel him, pen start, Lord, go. Me amamas, Lord, marry, marry, blow, big man. Throughout Jesus' ministry, we see the will of the Father is healing. That has never changed. Abraham's story is a living testimony of Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. At Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we pray over every prayer request we receive. Healing is for today, and healing is for you. Hello, my name is Jeremy Pearsons, and I'm so glad you have tuned in to this broadcast today. The things that you are hearing right now on this program, I gotta tell you, I'm a first-hand eyewitness of the message that you're receiving today. I grew up in this house. I call it the household of faith. When you grow up in the Copeland household, as when Kenneth and Gloria Copeland are your grandparents, George and Terry Pearsons are mom and dad, then you're gonna hear a lot about faith, and I heard a lot about faith growing up. And not just messages, messages on faith from a platform like this one, but we heard faith in the living room, man. We heard faith in the car on the way to school. It was faith in the morning, faith at noontime, faith when the sun went down. And one of the things we heard a lot about in connection to a living and walking by faith was partnership. And I wanna take just a moment right now and talk to you about partnership. If you know anything about Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, you know what a precious thing partnership is and how dear to their hearts their partners are. And many of you watching this right now, you are partners with them in this ministry and in the preaching of the gospel. And again, this is something we heard about even as children, the significance of being a partner with somebody who's preaching the gospel. And I believe that every believer all over the world, no matter who you are or where you are, you have a kingdom assignment to partner with somebody somewhere who's preaching Jesus. And I wanna tell you how significant it is, not just to my grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria, not just to our family, but to the Lord. This is so much bigger than a family thing. It is a kingdom thing. It is a family of faith thing. And we see it here in the book of Philippians, and of course, you know Philippians chapter four, verse 19, who doesn't know this one? My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Have you ever shouted over that one? I know I have. But the thing to keep in mind that's so important is that this is being written, not just to anyone and everyone, but to partners. As a matter of fact, the book of Philippians is a letter written in response to the giving of these people. And I know that because here in Philippians chapter one, Paul wrote and said in verse three, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy. What would keep him so thankful when he thought about these people? Well, verse five tells us, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Now that word fellowship, we think of it as hanging out with each other, but it's so much more than that. When you look it up and study it, you find that the word fellowship here is actually the word, guess what? Partnership. Paul is writing to his partners. 
people that have come alongside of him and are taking and doing their part in the preaching of the gospel. And partners, those of you who are partners with this ministry, that is exactly who you are and it is exactly what you are doing. As a partner, you are standing alongside Kenneth and Gloria Copeland in the assignment that this ministry has to preach the uncompromised word of faith all over the world. And, you'll say, and you're saying, I'll do my part. I'll do my part in that. And your part is to add faith. Your part is to add your agreement. Your part is to serve and your part is to sow. So find out today what the Lord would have you sow. Because again, this promise we all know and love, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We can declare that over you because you're partners. We can declare that over you and anyone who is saying, I'll do my part in the preaching of the gospel. So take that today, meditate on it, do with it what the Lord tells you to do, and remember you have a kingdom assignment to sow and to be a part with somebody preaching the gospel somewhere. Find out where it is and jump in with all your heart. God bless you. What is partnership? What is covenant partnership? Covenant partnership is still God's way for his people to work together. God has called each of us into ministry, both locally and globally. You might not be a five-fold minister, but you can partner with one who is ministering the gospel and sharing the truth of God's word around the world. Brother Copeland teaches three main principles of partnership. Seed time and harvest. When you sow seeds of faith into the ministry of the word of God, you can expect to reap a harvest. The anointing exchange. When we partner together, we get connected to the same anointing so you can expect the supernatural power that marks this ministry to operate in your life. And finally, the prophet's reward. As our partner in ministry, you can expect to receive equal credit for every soul saved, for every person healed, and for every life touched by the word of faith which we preach. These principles of partnership are the key to victory in these last days, and you don't wanna miss out. When you partner with this ministry, you will maximize effectiveness in end time harvest, bring supernatural increase into your life, and be a part of unity in the body of Christ. We are called to minister together, and together we are finishing the mission to which God called the church. As you partner, your voice goes where your feet can't, because where you give, you go, and everywhere you go, there is victory. Covenant partnership is God's plan for the blessing. And one of the most exciting principles of partnership is called the anointing exchange. Did you know that as a believer, you carry powerful anointing on the inside of you? In 1 John 2.20 says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. The grace, the anointing on your life, and your faith are absolutely essential for the body of Christ. In fact, as a ministry, we need your supply of faith. Now, oh, that might sound a little strange, but like we said before, both the Apostle Paul and Jesus look to their partners for support. You're probably familiar with this passage about putting on the armor of God, but if you're like me, you might not have noticed the partnership connection the Apostle Paul made. Let's look at Ephesians 6, 19 through 20. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might declare it fearlessly, boldly as I should. Notice the connection he makes here between prayer and boldness. He said, while you're praying, pray that I might have boldness and utterance. He is acknowledging that the prayers of his partners have everything to do with his anointing to speak boldly the mystery of the gospel. Now, I've got another example. In Matthew 26, 36 and Mark 14, 32, it's recorded that Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane along with his disciples, his partners, to pray. So in perhaps his greatest hour of need, Jesus looked to his partners for their support. He needed their presence. He needed their prayers. They had a supply that he needed. That was an exchange. And just like Elijah and the widow woman who provided the man of God with a meal, God showed up and provided for her out of his abundance. This is partnership. And it's not a one-way street. 
And just as we receive from the anointing and the supply of faith from you, you'll receive from the anointing and supply of faith from this ministry. Like First John said, all people reap the benefit of your anointing. And you can expect to walk in the blessing that Kenneth and Gloria Copeland walk in. The same supernatural power and the anointing that marks this ministry will mark your life as well. That is an anointing exchange. On the way to the hospital, I distinctly remember we were at a stoplight and I remember God saying specifically to me, I've got this. So when she was born, that was 2005. Yeah. You're at home, I was working here at the ministry, I was working in the prayer department uh, and I got a call. Uh, 11 o'clock at night, I think, she said, hey, we're going into labor. Everything seemed normal, right? Like yeah, you were so seeming normal. Yeah, so this was about three weeks before my due date, but that wasn't abnormal because I had been to the doctor and he was like, honestly, you could probably go into labor any day. And this was our second child. Mm -hmm. So um, we'd kind of already been through the process and everything was pretty much as it should be. Yeah. I had no complications in my pregnancy or anything like that. So it was just like, I went into labor. Yeah, we get there, we check in like normal, she's getting set up and they sent me down to work on insurance paperwork. And as I'm walking into the room, they're busy hooking her up and they're like, we gotta move her into the emergency room. We gotta get this baby out right now, her heart. And I'm looking at the monitor, her heart rate's going all over the place. And I remember standing in the room by myself, they had all moved out. It was just 10 seconds later and the Lord spoke to me. I got this. So I turn back and I look through the door. I look through the hole in the door. I look through the other hole in the door. And the nurse brings out little Avery right into those, where, those windows where I could see her. And she was lifeless. She was gray and super lifeless. I can see her set the baby down, which is out of my view. I can't see. So I spin around and I say, breathe in Jesus' name. The doctor told me three times within maybe an eight hour period that she could not make it out of this. Like this is a very serious situation. They just put me under general anesthetic, you know, so I'm coming out and I was half conscious and I had two doctors in my face and telling me, they said, your baby is dying and we're taking her to another hospital. Throughout the night, we figured out that there was a blood infection. Uh, she had a collapsed lung and pneumonia. pneumonia. Yeah, she wasn't breathing on her own actually at the time. It was just kind of a, one of those moments where the, really, honestly, the teaching comes up, right? Like the teaching of this place comes up and it gets activated in, the, in those moments. And it's those moments where, I mean, what you put in really does come out. It's like learning from this ministry, the power of God's word and speaking the power of God, putting that in your heart and that becoming reality, that is what comes out in those moments when you get pressed. It was really like a bubble of grace around us. And even though we were fighting for our child's life, I just never had a doubt in my mind that God was gonna come through for her, that God was gonna um, right the situation. It was steps along the way, so it'd be like, okay, well, we have to get her breathing on her own. And then it was like her um, platelets were down, you know? And so it was just like every, you know, well, they increased a little bit, but not enough. So it was just like, we just keep praying. We just keep speaking the word. She had two blood transfusions. To... She had three blood transfusions. And um, with every one, we would just pray and believe and stand on the word of God. We had another test and they said it was all fine. You know, it was all good. So, yeah, so it was really just a miracle to go from having the baby and telling us we're not sure if she's gonna live to two weeks later being discharged from the third hospital <laughs> that she had been in, but literally like clean bill of health, going home with a complete clean bill of health. And there's just no explanation for that except the power of God's word. It's so important to put the word in because you don't know when an attack is coming. And because I had been taught through this ministry, my family had been taught through this ministry, and my parents had taught me like you put the word in. You know, it's that daily, you know, putting the word in, speaking the word, having that in your heart, it, it made all the difference in the world. Partnership really does mean connection. And what's on this ministry, the healing that's on this ministry is on you as a partner. That to me is what partnership means, mm -hmm. that it's a connection and we're in this together, really. Yeah. There is so much power in partnership. It's all about coming together to see heaven manifested on earth. If you have a desire to walk in a greater anointing and in more victory, partnership is your next step. We want you to know that we're here for you. We want to welcome you into our ministry family. And when you become a partner, you'll receive the monthly Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. Now it's filled with articles and testimonies that'll help you grow your faith. And of course, Brother Copeland's partner letter will come to you every month. 
Another benefit that we take very seriously here is prayer. The Copelands and this entire staff pray for you every day. As part of this family, you will never have to go another day without prayer. Plus, we have licensed prayer ministers who are trained in the Word of God. They're waiting to agree with you for whatever breakthrough that you need. In fact, if you're watching right now and you need someone to agree with you, call 877-281-6297. There are so many benefits to partnership that you want to have. Visit InsideTheVision.org right now to become a partner. And we'll get your new partner package in the mail right away. Now, partnership is not a financial obligation. It's the heart in which you give that matters. 10% of every contribution KCM receives is sown into other organizations. Your giving not only supports the work of this ministry, but also supports dozens of other ministries around the world. These ministries include orphanages, food outreach programs, prison ministries, evangelistic ministries, and so many more. We call this Twice Sown Seed. It has exponential impact on what we can do together. So please go to InsideTheVision.org and sign up. And together, we'll reach even more people than we could on our own. The Lord just dropped it in my heart one day as I was praying. And, um, and it just dropped on the inside of my heart and I just spoke it out. And I said, the healing of the nation's motorcycle rally. In the early 70s, we had Brother Copeland come and, uh, and he ministered a whole week with Jerry Savelle in a place called White Post, Arizona. And they ministered a faith convention there, they preached faith. During that time was when I was really connected with Brother Copeland and Jerry Savelle. And uh, it was a, I believe it was a divine order. I believe it was a divine meeting that we had. You know, I was, at the time, I was probably like, you know, five, six years old. And when that happened, you know, I uh, looked at that and I, and I said, these guys are so different. You know, we, we have so many different ministries coming in and, and into these reservations, but there's something different about these two. One of the things I noticed up front as a kid was they were always giving to the people. They were giving their clothes or they were giving whatever they had to bless the people. When they were leaving that camp meeting, one of the things that I said to him was, this is, I mean, I'm a child here. I said to him, one of these days, I will preach the word of God like you and we will preach together. And this is as a child. It came out, out, of, out of my spirit and well, that happened. The Lord just dropped it in my heart one day as I was praying and um, and it just dropped on the inside of my heart and I just spoke it out and I said, the healing of the nation's motorcycle rally. Well, that's how it came about. And the heart behind it was to bring nations together for healing. Uh, it was to bring not only the Indian nations, but also as well as other nations of the world to come. And one of the things the Lord said is, I want to have the nations come to you instead of you going to the nations. And so it is great for these speakers to come to the reservation and be part of the healing of the nation's motorcycle rally and to where they sit under uh, the anointed word and get blessed like the rest of the world. And so that's one thing that was is really unique about any other meeting on the reservation is we use the motorcycle as a tool to reach to people and, you know, and to um, bring new people into the church. You are talking a whole generations of Brother Copeland connected with the Navajo Nation and many other Indian nations. And now we got healing of the nation that we started and he's part of it and he's been, he's been coming here to the Navajo Nation to be nothing but a blessing to the Navajo people and different tribes that come here as well and the nations of the world that come here. And so that's the, the heart of it is to bring unity to all the nations and healing to all the nations. There's a lot of things that God is doing and a lot of things that God is uh, revealing to the First Nation people. And like one of the greatest things is there's actually an awakening of the righteousness of God. And 
that part of it is what Kenneth Copeland Ministries and Partner are a part of as well. Everything Covenant of Faith does because we're partners with KCM and they're partners with us. And this is a partnership to further the gospel, to reach the Indian nations and all the other nations of the world. The vision of KCM is to see believers experiencing the fullness of the blessing. That's why we talk to you about partnership. We know the power it has to increase healing, prosperity, and the love of God in your life. KCM has a God-given mandate to minister the Word of Faith. We teach believers who they are in Christ Jesus, and we take them from the milk of the Word to the meat, and from religion to reality. So why do we have a 24-7 Victory Channel? Why do we publish books and magazines and podcasts? Why do we host live events? Every ounce of what we do is with our partners in mind. It is to help them become equipped for the days to come. And we're called to teach them how their faith can operate skillfully in God's Word. When you partner with us, you become part of this ministry. You help us accomplish that mission, and you make a way for believers everywhere to walk in victory. Your voice and your seed goes where your feet can't. Because where you give, you go. If you've decided to become a partner today, go to InsideTheVision.org. It's very simple to sign up. And when you do, you can be sure someone will be praying for you by dinner time. I know that Brother and Sister Copeland do, and they pray over their partners at every meal. If you're still praying about it, that's okay. We're just so honored that you're here with us right now. And now more than ever, this word of faith must be preached. And together, we're doing it all over the world. There's power in uniting together in partnership. Let me pray over you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this one watching. And I thank you, Lord, that together we are able to accomplish, God, what you've given us to do. And I thank you that a decision for partnership is a decision to join together in this great ministry to make sure that people are being fed the Word of God and they're living in victory and health and prosperity. Lord, thank you for the privilege that partnership brings in Jesus' name. Well, until next time, remember this. God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord.